What's up, YouTube? <laughs> Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how I make the most popular item in my shop, my custom belts. Me and my custom belts go way back. I owe a lot to these things. If it wasn't for these belts, I would not be here at all today. <laughs> like belts have literally like kept the lights on in my shop since day one. Literally about half of the work I do is in some form or another custom belts. I do try and mix a little bit of the super old school floral style tooling um, where it's kind of chunky and mainly textures. It's not so much vines. And then I also try and mix it with the what I like to call vine spaghetti, which is the new style floral where it's a lot of vine work and not a whole lot of texturing. I had a how to make a custom leather belt video on YouTube before. I had absolutely no business making a damn video about making a belt. Like it was, it was pretty rough. So um, I took it down, but this is my official professional craftsman stamp of approval on making belts. I know enough about them now to feel very confident in sharing this with you guys. But yeah, man, I love making these things. Honestly, that is enough backstory about these belts. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Start off by grabbing us a piece of leather. Then I mark a straight line down the long piece and cut it. That way our belts are gonna be nice and straight. Then I'm going to take my strap puller, set to an inch and a half, which is standard for most belts, and pull that down the whole length of the piece of leather that I got going. Now I'm going to mark the end. I have a little cheater tool right there that I've made. That way my snaps down at the end and my slot is nice and marked. Mark the length of the belt, which this one is set for 38 inches. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mark the holes down at the end as well. Move it over to the block, chop the tips. Now it's time for a good old maker's mark. Now I'm soaking the belt down so my art transfer is good. I got this little guide tool to make sure all my waves are nice and even throughout the whole belt. Then I'm going to lay down the key components. This belt we have a bunch of skulls going across the whole thing as well as some sunflowers and daisies. I'm laying those key components down. We want those to be nice and clear and spaced out good and even before we do all the filler floral. Then we move on to doing all the floral that's kind of in between those key components I was talking about. I try and incorporate them as much as possible. If you notice like on pretty much all the skulls, I like to wrap a vine around one of the horns or make it come out of you know an eye socket or something cool like that. Then I'm gonna go and erase off any excess pencil I may have, sharpen up that swivel knife, and then get to carving. On a design like this, where there's so much going on, we have so many different flowers and so many different skulls, and the way that the floral's all woven together, I kinda just swivel knife um, what I feel that I should. <laughs> Normally, I kinda start in one direction and keep going, but if you notice in this video, I'm kind of all over the place in terms of uh, you know, like what specific things I carve first. And then we're gonna go ahead and back that thing with some tape so it doesn't stretch when we go to tool it. We're gonna give it a nice little spritz one more time and then get to tooling. So this first step is called beveling, which is what really makes your piece three-dimensional. As you can see right off the jump, um, it goes from a flat piece of leather with some cuts on it into an actual three-dimensional piece of art. I start by doing all the beveling first. Some crafters do some texturing first, but I like doing all that beveling first to make sure our dimension and our depth is as deep as possible across the whole belt before I start moving on to other texturing tools like this one here. Um, I call it the pear shader. Some people call it the thumbprint tool. And this gives textures to our petal and our flowers. 
Um, then I move into a scallop tool, which is what you see on the leaves there. Then we are going to move on to the backgrounding, which is a huge important step in the process. This is what gives the floral and the pattern the appearance of really popping out and off of that belt. If you notice, it looks like it's now literally coming off of that piece of leather. Next, I'm going to move on to the smaller details, like the details we got in this skull. I usually don't really use a hammer. This is more of a hand molding kind of step. I like to use bevelers. Some people like to use uh, molding tools. I use both at times. It kind of just depends on the size of the piece and what the piece itself calls for. Then we're gonna jump into decorative cuts, which I love doing. It really adds emphasis in the flow and direction of the whole piece, keeping all the lines kind of moving in the same direction. Then we go into painting the borders, where I'll paint the borders and any background pieces that are attached directly to the borders before I move in with a smaller brush and paint any of the background pieces that are in the middle. Then we went with white daisies, white sunflowers, and white skulls. Kind of a unique combo, but you know, I was really feeling it. Then we'll add in any of the other colors we need, like the yellow in the center, and any browns, like the bull skulls you see there in the center of the sunflowers. I'm gonna give that bad boy a coat of oil, let it soak, and then we're gonna give it a coat of resist, so that way when we go to stain it, it doesn't absorb all that stain. While that's drying, we will go and get the backing of the belt set up where the cut isn't as important as you see. And then we're going to mark the ends where I'm gonna skive it down a little bit. That way the fold isn't so bulky. You don't get this giant lumpy thing down at the end of your belt. It folds a lot nicer. You can give that backing piece the same treatment, some oil and then we're gonna stain it black. And after a few hours, we're gonna jump over to staining the front of the belt itself. I love this step because it starts out looking so crazy like I ruined it, and then you wipe it off, revealing what you got left. We're gonna let that dry for a little bit before we come back and buff off any of the excess, which gives you a really high contrast in all your details and your background. Then we will glue the belt down to the back of the belt. And then we'll let that sit for a little bit. After that, we're gonna move on to the stitching groover. This is basically my guideline of where I'm going to stitch. Also, when I run it on the sewing machine, the stitching is gonna settle down nicely into that groove. Now we're coming into the home stretch. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it on the Cobra Class 4 machine. I personally like a big, nice, bold stitch where the stitches are you know, nice and spread apart. It really makes that sewing pop. Then we gotta trim and burn those threads. And the most stressful part of the entire job is running this razor blade ever so <laughs> carefully down the side of this belt to trim off the excess backing piece we have. After that, I take it over to the sanding wheel just to make sure that our edges are nice and flush. Send it on over to the edge beveler, which gives us nice round edges instead of having these hard 90 degree angles um, around the whole belt. It makes it feel a lot more natural in the hand. Then we're going to dress the edges. I use black stain, so that way it matches. Then we're gonna let that stain on the edges dry a little bit and run a giant chunk of beeswax on the edges, which is gonna give us an, a nice waxy finish on the edge. Take it over to the burnisher, and this is going to melt that wax down and create a really nice, glossy, finished looking edge. Then we were gonna go ahead and punch all the holes flip it around and do the holes for the snaps as well as the buckle slot. Then the next step is one of my favorite tricks that I learned where we're gonna go ahead and smash down where the snaps go. This allows us to give us 
as much thickness in the leather as possible while still making sure the snaps reach all the way through without having to use Chicago screws. Then you fold it over, throw your keeper, put the buckle on, and you're ready to roll. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Like I said before, belts really are the bread and butter of what I do. So they hold a very, very near and dear close spot to my heart. Um, I owe all my success to these things. Without them, I would not be able to make art for a living basically. So whether you are a random person who found this video on YouTube or you're a customer, that is how I make my custom belts. If you enjoyed it, if you learned anything, um, if you thought it was interesting, please drop a like or a comment. That would mean a lot to me. Before the video cuts off, I remembered a really crazy story um, when I was filming the intro to this video actually. So I chopped it out of the intro to kind of keep it shorter and more concise in the front half. And it's just like a bonus story at the end. Um, so stick around if you want to hear the insanity that uh, <laughs> occurs. Also, I in the story that I tell, I don't think uh, I mention how early in my leather crafting career that I got this opportunity. Um, I think I was within like the first nine months to like a year. Like it was really, really early on and I was super stressed out by it. And um, basically the pressure from this project really helped uh, step my game up overall. Um, you know, today I think I could do a better job just out of principle and working on my craft for this long. But um, yeah, thanks again for watching the video and we're gonna go into a short mini story time. <laughs> I always forget about this, but if anybody out there has seen the Hannah Montana movie, um, if you know the horse in the movie, Blue Jeans, um, I made a <laughs> I made a belt that had hair inlaid of the horse. He had died, and I got the opportunity to make a belt <laughs> out of the Hannah Montana horse. <laughs> But yeah, man, I love making these things and I hope I have some kind of transition in there because 